Welcome back to The World Today. Now, as fighting continues in Kobane, activists say U.S.-led airstrikes against Islamic State militants in Syria have killed 553 people since September. The UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says 464 ISIS fighters, 57 other militants, and 32 civilians have died. In the meantime, a fighting, fierce fighting resumed in the town of Kobani, where militants and Kurdish forces battling, have been battling for control. The battle for the strategic town of Kobani rages as gunshots ring out and echo across the Turkish side of the border. Kobani lies on the border with Turkey and Islamic State fighters keen to consolidate territorial gains in northern Syria have pressed an offensive against the town even as US-led forces started bombing their positions. The battle has also taken on major political significance for Turkey where the siege has sparked protests among Kurds and threatened the peace process with Turkey's own Kurdish insurgents who are angry at the government for failing to aid Kobani. Under pressure to go beyond humanitarian assistance for those slaying the violence, Turkey said on Monday that it would allow Iraqi Kurdish fighters known as Peshmerga or those who confront death to cross its territory to reach Kobani. The degree to which we have to remain vigilant. Meanwhile, the U.S.-led campaign against Islamic State, which has seized swathes of territory across Iraq and Syria, continued on Wednesday as airstrikes killed about 25 of the militants near the northern Iraqi city of Baji. The U.S. Central Command said it targeted the militant group carrying out 12 strikes near Iraqi's Mosul Dam and six others close to Kobani. We're still in the Middle East. Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu has accused the Palestinian president of incitement. This comes after an attack which killed a baby in Jerusalem. Mr. Netanyahu said Mahmoud Abbas had provided encouragement for incidents such as the killing of the three-month-old baby by a Palestinian driver. The man drove his car into a crowd at a tram stop, injuring eight other people. He died hours after being shot by the police. Our spokesperson for, uh, at the, of the Israeli uh, government at the incident has said that the incident was being treated as a terrorist attack. The driver was identified as a 21-year-old Abdel Rahman Shaloudi, who was shot as he tried to flee the scene on foot. Shaloudi was the nephew of a lead bomb maker from Hamas, the Islamist group militant opposed, in, opposed to Israel, who was killed in the West Bank in 1988. We'll take another break now on The World Today. When we come back, we're taking a look at other stories. The latest on Total boss Christophe de Marjorie and his uh, unfortunate end. Please join us again. Welcome back. Heads are rolling after the death of Total boss Christophe de Marjorie, the chief executive of Russia's Yunokovo Airport, and his deputy have resigned after the plane crash that killed him. The Moscow airport said in a statement that it had accepted the resignations of Andrei Dyakov and his number two, Sergei Sonsev. Russian prosecutors have also detained five airport workers over the crash. Christophe de Marjorie and the private aircraft, so th three crew were killed when the aircraft hit a snowplow. The Dessault Falcon plane was taken off as it clipped the snowplow and burst into flames. The driver of the plow, one of the five being detained, was accused by authorities of being drunk. A 60-year-old Vladimir Matinenokov, however, denied this, saying that he mistakenly strayed onto the runway in bad weather. Coming back home to Nigeria, the Adamawa state government says it cannot immediately confirm the abduction of over 60 women in Waga, Mangoro and Garta villages in Madagali local government area of the state. 40 women are reported to have been abducted from Waga, Mangoro, while 20 others are said to have been kidnapped in Garta village. Hundreds of terrorists on motorcycles and vans were said to have run 
overrun the area during the rampage on Saturday. Residents say that the insurgents burnt houses and abducted young women, forcing many residents to flee the area, which has been under Boko Haram's siege for almost two months. Well, residents in the area uh, say that uh, the two villages were attacked by terrorists, uh, Awaga Mangoro and in Magdagali and Gerta in Michika are now ghost towns. That's what it looks like. One of them who spoke to Channel Television on the condition of anonymity also confirmed that 62 girls were abducted in Michika and Madagali local government areas and not 60 as being reported. The resident told Channel Television that the insurgents dressed in military uniforms not only attacked the villages but burnt down several houses. And he explained that many people have fled the attacked villages and are now taking refuge in Mubi Town and Yola, the Adamawa state capital. Yeah, the con uh, phone conversation between the Director of Press and Damawa State Government, Mr. Phineas Elisha, and our correspondent much earlier today. In other African countries, Botswana will tomorrow hold what, uh, what is expected to be its closest election since gaining independence from Britain 48 years ago. President Ian Kama's ruling party faces growing dissent in a country often heralded as a beacon of African democracy. Nevertheless, Kama's Botswana Democratic Party is expected to win a reduced majority and in the grip on power that it has held since 1966. There is, however, growing support for opposition parties who say change is needed with economic growth slowing and unemployment stuck at around 20%. Kama, who's a son of the Southern African country's first president, has promised jobs and improved water and electricity output if he wins another five years in office. Well, back here in Nigeria still, a German international broadcaster Deutsche Welle has announced its Lagos office is now operational. Deutsche Welle broadcasts news and information on shortwave.